I have a real treat to share with you today. A 1971 Roadrunner equipped with the 446 barrel and a 4 speed. This Roadrunner is definitely a rare car and was ordered by someone who wanted to go fast. And how rare is it? Well, only 246 Roadrunners were ordered with the V code, and of that number, only 137 were 4 speeds. The 446 barrel was chosen by drivers who wanted great street performance, but they weren't willing to go all out with the Hemi cars. The 446 barrel was a very capable package. Carcraft in January 71 took one of these cars and ran a 1371 at 101 miles per hour. Just as a side note, uh, something I came across in my research was a Motor Trend did a test on one of these cars as well in the February 71 uh, edition, and they ran a 1502. And then the same testing session, they took a 383 Roadrunner and ran a 1484. Now, there must have been something seriously wrong with their test car, because most six-pack cars from 69 to 71, when you look at the, the times they ran, they were pretty much a solid 13-second car. Whoever ordered this Roadrunner was looking to capitalize on that kind of performance. But there's also some options that he chose that shows he was personalizing it to his own tastes. First off, a hot performance car and FE5 Rally Red go together hand in hand. They ordered hood pins and a tachometer. They also ordered power steering. And that's not hard to see why they might have done that, because anybody who's had to park a manual steering car with a big block knows how difficult that can be. They also ordered manual brakes, which means that the car has drum brakes all the way around, 11 by 3 in the front. If they had chosen disc brakes, the car would have power assist. Inside, they ordered the bench seat, and kept the base steering wheel. Interestingly, only 15% of Roadrunners were ordered with the bench seat. There are some options seen on this car that are not on the fender tag, and that's the gull wing, the strobe stripe, and the bread exhaust tips. But without seeing the broadcast sheet, it's hard to say for sure whether they belong or not. Another option that's not on the fender tag is the rear window defogger. Now for a car like this, it seems unlikely that someone would add that in afterwards. So it was probably built that way and likely for an owner in a northern climate. And one other option as well this car has are the hood turn signals. Not a speed part by any means, but it's an option that I'll that a lot of Mopar guys like. For a car like this, you would think that the owner would have opted for maybe Radio Delete or just the basic AM radio. But instead, they spent $213 to get the AM FM radio. So they must have really liked listening to their tunes while they were rowing the gears. There were only two options for rear gears when he ordered a V-code and 4-speed. You automatically got the Dana 60 with sure grip and either 354 or 410 gears. The deep gears also meant that there was a power steering cooler installed. The way this car is equipped, the car cost in the neighborhood of $4,000, more or less. That's equivalent to about $30,000 today. This car has one little mystery. It was built in Windsor, Ontario and built to USA specs, 
but it has an export tag on the header panel. This tag is well worn and it's been there a while. And again, that's not something that someone would just add for fun. At least you wouldn't think so. So if anybody out there has an idea why that tag is there, feel free to chime in in the comments. I really like the way this Roadrunner is built. It's hard to go wrong with a big block and a four speed. And it has just the right mix of options to take care of business. I hope you enjoyed this Roadrunner as much as I did. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again for more great features.